Hi, I'm Vance, and welcome to Repair and Replace. If there's a large buildup of ice inside your refrigerator, then it could be an issue with the defrost circuit. Before you can do any troubleshooting, you'll have to clear away the ice. In this episode, first we'll learn how it all works. Then we'll manually defrost the freezer. Finally, we'll see how to clean out a blocked drain line. This applies to most top freezer, bottom freezer, and side-by-side -side refrigerators. Each time the door is opened, humid air enters the fridge. This moisture condenses and freezes around the evaporator coils. If left unchecked, a buildup of ice will prevent the refrigerator from cooling properly. Modern refrigerators have a defrost system. This includes a defrost timer or controller, a heating element, and a thermostat or thermistor. When the cycle begins, the defrost control shuts off power to the compressor and the fans. This prevents the refrigerator from cooling while the heater is active. Next, power is sent to the heating element, which melts the ice on the coils. The water flows into the drain pan under the fridge and evaporates over time. The heating element continues to heat until the defrost thermostat warms up and disconnects power. Once the time is up, power switches back to the cooling circuit. If the defrost cycle isn't working, then ice will build up on the evaporator coils, preventing the system from cooling properly. Additionally, a blockage in the drain line will prevent melted ice from draining. This water will refreeze at the bottom. It's worth trying to start the defrost cycle manually. Top freezer refrigerators usually have a defrost timer located in the control module. You can use a flat blade screwdriver to turn the screw clockwise until it clicks. The defrost cycle should begin. If the heater warms up, then you've verified that the heating element is good. In this case, the defrost timer is likely faulty and should be replaced. Now to switch out of the defrost mode and reset the timer, turn the screw clockwise until it clicks again. To begin, you might need a screwdriver or nut driver. You might also need a towel, a heat gun, and an air compressor. Keep in mind there is some variation between models and not all refrigerators will have the same parts. You can enter your model number on the AIM Resupply website to see a parts breakdown. This can be helpful to show you which parts are in your refrigerator and where they are located. First, slide the refrigerator out from the wall. When there is enough room, unplug the cord to disconnect the power. In some models, you might need to remove the water supply line to gain access to the back. Close the shutoff valve to turn off the water supply. Next, use an adjustable wrench to loosen and remove the supply line. Let any remaining water drain into a plastic container. Now, slide the fridge all the way out so you have plenty of room to work. On the back of the refrigerator is an access panel. Use a one quarter inch nut driver to remove the screws. Now simply lift up to remove the panel. If there is a large buildup of ice, then you'll have to defrost the freezer to gain access to the evaporator coils. First, Place a towel at the bottom of the refrigerator to catch any water. To melt the ice, you can leave the freezer door open, 
but that will likely take many hours. To speed this up, you can soak a cloth in warm water and wipe down the frost. Additionally, you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun on a low heat setting. As the ice starts to melt, you can chip it into smaller pieces. Once it's clear, remove the screws to the freezer cover panel. Lift up the mounting tabs and remove the panel. If the fan is mounted to the panel, you might need to disconnect the wire harness. Now remove the ice around the evaporator coils. Be careful and avoid chipping away ice on the coils, as they are easily damaged. If you end up puncturing the coils, the refrigerant will leak out. This can only be repaired by a certified technician and is very expensive to fix. Once the ice is removed, dry off the freezer. If necessary, let it air dry. The defrost drain line sits below the evaporator coils. A blockage in this line will restrict the flow and can prevent water from draining. This can create a buildup of ice in the freezer. In other cases, water might leak into the refrigerator section. With the ice cleared from around the drain, remove any food or debris that might be blocking the line. Just try not to push it further into the drain. If you think that there's ice in the line, then you can use hot water to melt the blockages. Now if no water is draining, or if it's draining slowly, then there might be some debris blocking the line. It can be helpful to use compressed air. At the back of the refrigerator, apply the compressed air to the bottom of the drain line. Now see if it drains. Repeat until the drain line is clear. Now if the defrost system still isn't working, then it could be an issue with another component. You can see how to troubleshoot this in the video linked below. Align the freezer cover panel. If needed, reconnect the wire harness. Now, tighten the mounting screws. Align the back panel onto the mounting tabs. Now, tighten the screws. Reconnect the water supply and tighten the connection. Open the shutoff valve. Plug in the cord to reconnect the power. Now slide it back into place. Make sure to leave a couple of inches of space between the refrigerator and the wall. This will allow for proper airflow. Now test the refrigerator to see if it's working properly. If you like this and want to see more tutorials and informational videos, then subscribe to our channel. And if you need help, you can call or visit an Amory location to talk with our knowledgeable staff. Thanks for watching.